So this question comes from Marcus T. I understand everyone's uh, brain is different, but what would you find to be the minimum number of books or IT-related works one should read a week to be successful and multifaceted IT professional? During the years of your learning, what is the most you found you could cram into the brain each week without losing retention? Do you think people who aren't successful in IT simply haven't studied up and read enough books and thus don't have the right tools to tackle problems? Um, so you got the right idea, but I would argue be the wrong specifics here. Um, essentially, as I, as, as, um, I say, and I've actually said this in a question I answered today, is what I would argue is that you should improve yourself by 30 to 60 minutes per day, every day throughout the year, even on weekends. Again, being a geek, um, I read about technology and all that kind of stuff every single day, and that is what I would argue. As far as books go, you know, you look at the books behind me, and books even of the same thickness uh, can be more or less difficult to get through. So a dummy's book like that, you know, I might be able to read in a day or two, whereas, let's say, configuring Windows 7 training kit, almost the exact same size, uh, it would take me about a week to get through that one. So really it's not quite this, the, the number of books, it's essentially that you just sit down and you take your time and you learn, again, about 30 to 60 minutes per day. Now what should you be learning about? I would argue you should be learning about whatever interests you. This is a big problem that I see in the real world of IT, is you guys go out there and you start focusing on all these weird pieces of technology that you aren't actually dealing with, you aren't working with, you will probably never touch in your life, but you have this idea that is what you need to learn. The best thing that you can possibly do is learn about the things that you are in fact working with. You know, actually play with the technology or learn the technology that you're already playing with. So, uh, so you know, if you're going to be building a server for the house, then you think about, okay, what's the best type of silver server I should build for my house? And then you think, okay, uh, I should probably build a Linux server for my house. And then once you decide to build a Linux for your server for your house, then you figure out how to build the Linux server, and then you configure the Linux server, then you play with the Linux server, then you maintain the Linux server, and the thing is, is you just built that for your house, so you're actually going to continually get experience with it as you play with it, right? So that that's one of the things to be thinking about, is go after the technology, go after the things that interest you, and you will find your career path that way. Um, the uh, noobs have this idea that, you know, real successful technology professionals that we just go out out there and we followed like the path you get your a plus and your net plus <coughs> and your mcsc and all that kind of stuff and you just go just go straight ahead that's not how it works the real path of an IT person looks like this. It is just a complete and utter mess. If you talk with real IT people, if you talk with people that are really successful, their experience is going to be all over the board. It's not going to make a damn bit of sense to you. And that's kind of the point, because they followed all of these random things. I did a little bit of this, and I did a little bit of that, then I did a little bit of this, and then all of a sudden, this thing that I was playing with uh, actually became really valuable, um, and then these people hired me off, and it was great. Um, you look at things like Go. Right, Go or is it Dart? Uh, but they're, they're Google programming languages, right? Um, and for a long time, absolutely nobody used them. So, uh, so some people played with them uh, because they thought they were cool and interesting, especially since Google had uh, created them, but they, they weren't really popular uh, in, in the wider world. Then for whatever reason, all of a sudden they become popular and now those people are successful. Right. Um, if they had come to me and they had asked me back in the day, should they learn Go? I would have said no. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like if you had asked me, should you learn this program language? I would have said absolutely not. Do something else. But, but come to find out, they were interested in it. They played with it. All of a sudden, it becomes valuable and and it explodes. It be, it, it becomes a good thing. Um, and that's one thing that you do have to understand about like the the IT world and technology world is so many things are bets. Um, again, I know uh, I know a company around here. I know the CEO of the company who does uh, iOS app development. And the thing was that was a complete and utter bet when he when he shifted his company to start doing iOS app development. Uh, it was back in the day. It was like literally the the, the minute the original iOS SDK software development kit came out. He shifted his entire company to do that. Nobody had any, you know, now it's really easy to say he was a genius. But back then, 
Nobody had any idea the iPhone would turn into what we now know as the iPhone. Um, and so it, it was a guess. It was like, it, it was, he looked at it. It was one of those things that he believed in what he saw. Um, and that paid off. So that is one of the things that you're, you're going to hear a lot, um, especially when you hear about startup companies or going to work for startup companies. Uh, one of the, the things that you, you're going to hear again and again and again, and it sounds really dumb and it sounds really cheesy, but it really is true, is, is the idea of do you believe in the vision? Do you believe in the vision of the founder? Do you believe in the vision of the company? Do you believe in the vision of, of the product? And that is what you're going to have to bet on. Like when you see these products, do you believe in that? Can you, can you see where that's going to be in five years? Because if you can see where that's going to be in five years and you really think um, there, there's amazing potential there, then that's what you should focus on. And, and we run into this a lot. Um, back when um, I got my, uh, my MCSE, again, I got my MCSE, MCSE, CSE uh, NT 4.0 back in that day uh, it literally it, it you know it was like do do I go for MCSE or do I go for Novell like Novell and Microsoft at that time were competitive it really was it's like do you do you go for Microsoft or do you go for Novell um, and within two years basically Novell had flipped over and died and Microsoft is has kept going and where we're, we're, we're Microsoft is now um, and so that that's the thing is you look at all these technologies and you kind of have to make the bet what do I what do I believe in where do I think things are going you know with with development. If you're going to be a developer, you're looking at iOS, you're looking at Android. There's a bet there. What, what do you think really is going to be more successful at the end of the day? And, and you have to go from there. So what I would say is follow your interests. Whatever your interests are, follow those. Um, uh, geeks especially have, have I think they we have a pretty good track record of, of following things that will be valuable at the end of the day. You know, if it's interesting to you, it's probably interesting to other people. And if it's interesting to other people, there's probably money money at the end of that rainbow. Um, so follow the things that are interesting to you. Uh, work on projects uh, and work with technology that you actually are going to interact with. Again, things like building the server in your house. Like look around your house. What technology can you deploy in your house? And then deploy that technology in your house uh, and then beyond that just focus on doing 30 to 60 minutes of self-improvement and technology every day again whether it's books whether it's studying things online whether it's code academy whether it's CBT nuggets whatever the hell it is uh, just think about more like time that just you sit down you do your 30 to 60 minutes a day um, and I would argue that is a better focus than worrying about how many books